Whether you're going to do lining or shading, let's do it. <clears throat> so basically, I'm doing a lot of stuff on myself so I can do this. I save a little bit of my needles and I double check. Um, a lot of these have been used and you know you don't want to do that. Reuse them, you know what I'm saying? But I know who I am and if I have it, I have it. I'm not going to repass it to myself. As far as MRSA, it has a shelf life of like two weeks. So, I dropped these in the sanitizer and autoclave. Still a little dirty though, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick me out. Probably, we'll do a double mag here. I'm gonna pick out a mag. Now, <clears throat> your stacked mags like this, good fill, good color, um, stuff like that. Your seven mag, ideal. The seven mag can get through a whole piece. Uh, it's good for your shading and gradients, and I'll give you a couple of pointers at the end of this video on what to get. All right. So set up your needle grouping, and what's the first step you do when you take a needle out of its package? If you haven't got one of these yet, you're wrong. Double check that, and I can't really see, so I'm gonna go down to another one. There we go. Most important step of the process right there. Doing this, it's not gonna work, okay? That's a 100 times magnification right there. This one's only 10. And uh, a lot of times you can't even see. Um, I found about, out of a package of 50, I found 20 with little tiny balls at the end of the tips. Not even sharp, just balls. I had to chuck them. All right, very important. <clears throat> Find the tip that is going to go in conjunction with your needle grouping, all right? It cannot be too tight and it cannot be too loose. This right about there is gonna be perfect. Okay. Can you see that? I don't know what's up with my camera today. But this is good. Alright. Get set up there. Make sure that your hands are sanitized, obviously. Wash them. And also shade the area with absolutely no hair follicles sticking out of the area you're going to tattoo. Alright. And then we'll get set up. So to do stick it in the tube don't worry about this part on being all crazy just drop it in there all right needle bar to the bottom don't rely on what they say about the loops sometimes it's front or left and sometimes it's right and this one looks a little bent slight little bend in it my grouping not too much or you will um, have too much friction it will rub against the inside of the tube it will defeat the purpose of the rubber band bottom and remember what I said I said grab the inside of the well this part right here grab the inside of this like this when you're putting it in the tube or the vise bottom so it doesn't uh, dick around on you. You don't need to do wear gloves at this point. Don't be so anal. Like the pros are. They pick their balls and scratch their ass every freaking five minutes behind closed doors. Who's telling them what they're doing? Act all sanitary like they're doctors. Alright. Grab it like this. Now I have tension. It's not going nowhere. Okay, so right now I'm going to be first time 
It's the first time this machine is going to be ran. Pretty excited for that. Joey D. And it looks off. Mm, I hope it's not off. It is. It is off. I'm going to have to adjust this. Alright. Grab onto that. So we have steady pressure. tight fucking fit nothing's been ran through here you can tell okay lock that vice down doesn't matter right now the setting you guys see okay make sure your area is set up okay make sure you have your inks and set up make sure you have your uh, rinse cup set up make sure you have your green soap available and handy ready to go and also um, your a and D or Vaseline whatever you're gonna be using I flip a cup over on top like this and I put it all up here and then I use some on my glove as well okay so I've got my folded square this is what I'm gonna be using for a grommet you could use a grommet or you can do it the way I'm doing it. actually there's a grommet on there already let's see it's funny because this needles going to the right not the left the eye loop the top it's going to the right Everybody says, oh, they just go to the left. Well, like I said, sometimes that's not the case. In this case, it's not the case. I'm going to take this grommet off. So, <laughs> remember I was showing you figure eight? On all my, machine, my machines, I actually put that, uh, that white on the iron bar so I can actually adjust it myself. <clears throat> so teaching you guys, I actually come up with something that's pretty convenient. Now that you've got your needle bar in place on your armature bar grouping, make sure that everything's straight at this time. That's what you want to do. Lock everything down. The tighter the better. Okay? And hopefully you went out and got one of these. It's going to make your job easier. Make sure everything's straight. everything down okay this part now that you have everything attached make and make your adjustment here okay right here that's as far as you want your tip to be if you're using a hex key if you have a screw in that's gonna be automatic like this one is okay go ahead and adjust your vise as tight as possible um, and as far as your needles hanging out, do not have them hanging out, okay? I don't care what they say. For this purpose and for right now, we're not gonna do that. Um, and let's put it up for shading and flash color, all right? That's what this, this is gonna be right here. So you're, you're not gonna be hanging out, okay? And you're gonna adjust and look down the barrel you're gonna look down your your tips okay and with this arm and this finger which will be your right if you're holding the machine the way that I am hold it like this put your finger on the end of your arm bar and don't touch the front spring pull down arm bar and make sure that everything's straight okay Make sure that you're up, you know, to where you can't feel that. You're just a little tiny bit behind the tip in there. It's not hanging out yet. When you pull it down, I don't want it to be the size of a nickel for shading. So grab yourself a reference, a nickel. <clears throat> and I want it to be a nickel. 
Okay. And I might have to change out my grouping because this stock is too short on it for this machine. It's the first time I've used this machine, so. Stock on top. Very important to keep that as straight as possible with the, uh, the needles there, okay? Extremely important when you're working. Straighter the better at this point. Okay? So at this point, when you take the needle out and the needles come out, it's the size of a nickel. Alright? Size of the, the nickel coming out. Also, right here, for shading and coloring, coloring could be a little bit more than the nickel in here. Go from your front coil to your arm bar. Make sure that a nickel can go under there. And I'm talking about coil. Coil to arm bar, nickel. Also, nickel from contact screw, contact gap, okay? So I pull this down, right in there is gonna be a nickel. I lift it back up and let it go, right in there is gonna be a nickel. Go ahead and double check your work. And that's how we'll adjust the power supply to that. That is gonna set your throw in proper depth. Use your rubber band. One rubber band. Let's go ahead and secure it. <clears throat> Double check. Let's make sure everything's freaking tight. Attach the power supply, the clip cord. Okay, so go ahead and add your, your ink. I've got some outlining ink. This is uh, Kirasumi and uh, some Black Buddha. Okay, I have some Mongs by Millennium. Um, I've got some, what else do I got? There's a whole bunch of blacks. Mongs are pretty good. Scream sucks and 10 sucks. Sorry, Mario Barth. I don't like your shit. I don't like it. I don't care what nobody says. It doesn't work for me. Go ahead and wash down and disinfect the area that you're going to be tattooing. Nice and thorough. Kill those germs. At this point, this is when you're going to glove up. Okay? Washing that area. Also, rule of thumb, make sure that your paper towel that you're using is wet. That's to ensure that no particles get stuck in your needle grouping. All right, at this point, this is where you become some. And I went ahead and got some of my element black. Um, it's just some element ink here. Make sure that you're sanitary, okay, with, with these uh, bottles. It's very important. Don't reuse your caps. Never ever take your ink from your cap and put it back in your bottle. You fail if you've ever done that. For the purpose of this video, I'm only going to use one glove. Go ahead and pop your glove on. Alright. I'm using McKesson. Andy. Okay. It's good stuff to use during your tattoo process. I take a little bit out. About that much. <clears throat> Stick it on the end of my cup. Don't contaminate this area. You have your glove on at this point. When you dig into your A&D, have your glove on at that point because that's gonna be going out to clients. Okay? So I take whatever residue that I just scooped and just stick it on the area that I'm ta gonna tattoo. Moistens the skin. <clears throat> Gets it ready for a little bit of trauma. Wakes it up. Let's it know. Okay? Keep that nearby, that's gonna be dipped in a lot. 
required for me going and operating and setting up. Now this is going to be the time. The clipboard is connected. Get comfortable. And uh, now you set your voltage. You've got your depth here and your gap has a nickel and a nickel under here. If you do not have this under here, if there's not adequate light on the rear coil, there, if there's a paper thin gap in the rear coil and a nickel up here, when you close this armature bar, the rear coil has to have a paper thin gap. The front has to be touching, okay? While you're holding it down and checking for the rear gap on the rear coil, size of a paper thin, you're gonna be noticing that uh, the contact spring and screw is about a nickel for shading and coloring. A little bit deeper for uh, uh, coloring, okay? The throw, so you're gonna have a little bit more open than a nickel for coloring. You're gonna let go of that. There needs to be a nickel space from front coil to armature bar. Make sure that down the center of your tube, everything is correct. This needle bar has to be pretty close to the middle of that vise, the tube. If it's not, let it be more towards the back than the front. And that's what the bend is for, and that's why we have a rubber band. The rubber band pulls that bend that I showed you back to straight again and right here. I'm gonna check with my eye loop when it's running that I don't have any up and down movement. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna hold it flush and I'm gonna come in here and I can see the top of the needle bar, the bar, the actual bar, and I'm gonna see if it's going up and down without any flop. So we have perfection there. Set your speed. How you do this is turn your <coughs> power supply all the way to the down. Okay. I need a better. Uh, soon I'm going to be getting a better camera so you can see a, a wide variety instead of this eyesight. Okay. Hit your power supply all the way down. Okay. I'm all the way down. That's how you know a good running machine. I'm all the way down to zero, like one volt. Still running. That's a good machine. So, close your eyes and listen. There it is. Okay, do it again. Okay, now, in order to check that this is proper and that you have proper speed, um, your needles, to begin with, like I told you, don't hang them out of the tube right now. Have them where they're micromillimeters above this tip. You can't feel them, only the tip, okay? I don't care what they tell you. Do what I'm telling you right now and then we'll move on to uh, bigger and better things, all right? Make sure that just micro millimeters up in there on the tip, okay? We've already got the cap set here. Now, when you're running it, what I want you to do is I want you to hold it here like you're pistol gripping it, okay? And I want you to take your thumb and hit on the bottom and look, put pressure there and see how much that needle is dropping back in the tube. If the needle is dropping back up in the tube, then it's too low. If it's, there's no give in that needle at all and it's just staying steady when you put this pressure. When you put pressure here, there should be a slight give, but the needle should go up just a micro millimeter, like point decimals of a millimeter. There should be a little bit of gauge in there. When I'm going like this, and I do this, the needle should go up just a tiny, tiny bit. There should be a little bit of play. It can't be stiff like you're, you're just slicing, okay? And that's how you know if you're running fast enough or slow enough. So right now, I need to go a little bit higher. A little bit lower. Perfect. 
Every every machine's gonna sound different and feel different. Okay, I can't tell you. Oh, that's the sound. It's that drone. You know what? It goes on feel. All right. This is where you're gonna get it right here. In all reality, it's gonna be here. This is you putting pressure here is gonna be the same as those needles going into the skin, and it has to be giving a little bit. Because if it doesn't, you're just slicing. And but if it gives too much, then you're not penetrating. It's too much resistance on the skin especially more sharps that you have. The more needles that you have at the tip of this, um, the harder the resistance is. Okay, so the, the bigger the needle group, the more power you're gonna need, the more voltage you're gonna need. Remember, voltage is for power, needles penetrating the skin. Contact gap is for speed of the machine, and so is the capacitor, okay? Um, and the power, the, the power supply has nothing to do with the speed of the machine. When you turn it up and it's zipping, it's not speeding up the machine. It's called CPS, cycles per second, okay? And uh, duty cycles per second, you hear everybody on the net talking about that. We won't get into that right now. Don't worry about that. You know what, dudes that have been in the business for 20 years, they don't even use a gauge. They don't use a multimeter. They don't use a anything except for a supply unit. Some of these cats I know are using batteries to run, their, that's their power source is a freaking battery, a car battery. So, I mean, it is what it is, you know what I mean? And that's what it is. So, let's get to it. Make sure that you double check your work. Make sure that it's running right for you. Uh, take a smoke break, whatever you gotta do, prepare yourself. Um, and that's about it, and I'll be right back. And we'll start before you get started. Okay. Make sure any residuals that are there are off. And uh, always run, when you when you clean it off, when you're running it, always run your machine backwards, okay? Backwards. Obviously, not frontwards. Um, and when you dip, when you dip into and for the purpose of the video, I'm gonna use this holder. I never use a holder, I just use Vaseline or the AMD attached and stick it to my foil. What you're gonna do though, is you're gonna just dip. Dip in halfway, okay? And then hit it a couple times. Do it again. Get it up in there. All you gotta do is dip. Don't sit there and run it in there. You know what I mean? There's no need for that. You're just gonna bang up your needles. First time you bang, I know you guys, some of you guys have banged the needles and kept going. Let me tell you right now, that's why you were more in pain or your client was, and that's why your, your tattoo turned out shitty. So let's get into it now, okay? A little bit more of that A&D. And obviously my arm's been through hell and back. It's all scratched up, it's all scarred up, scar tissue, and that's why it looks blue and everything. There's not much I can do with it. I can keep going over it and training. That's it, you know? Unfortunately, that's what I have. But I don't care, I like it. You know, it's, just, it's something to talk about. Let's get into it. We got the proper depth, proper speed, everything's set up. Now take a look, okay? When you approach, you want your needle and tip to be at a 45 when you enter. When you enter the skin, I want you to apply some pressure to the skin and when you're in, I want you to move around in circles, okay? Just like that, small little circles, okay? You're at a 45 degree angle with the machine, 45 degrees. Your depth is already there, you don't have to sink it to the, to the tip. When you get better, you can work off just the tips. But when you're in, I, what I want you to do is when you stick the needles in the first time, don't take it out. Listen to me, this is very important. This is where we mess up. When you stick it in, lift it, stick it and go over it again, lift it up, stick it again, you're tearing up your skin, okay? Twice, that's all we want. You keep going over twice, you're overworking the skin. So, 45 degree angle and apply some ink. If it splats like that, a little bit like that, don't worry about it. Stretch that skin, I'm doing it with one arm, it's hard. Make sure you have, get in there. Don't 
Don't lift that, those needles up out of the skin. You hear me? When you get to this edge, maybe you want to dig in, flick out, dig in, flick out, dig in, flick out, dig in, flick out. Okay? Like that. And then we'll see what we did there. All right? Make sure your, your paper towel, whatever you're wiping is, is done, and complete, and cool. You sunk some ink. Okay? The objective here, guys, is when you're in the skin, you want to be at a 45 degree angle with penetration. You want to stick those needles in. And while you, let's say this, you, a lot of people, zzz, take it out, go again, zzz, go again. Here's the objective, guys. Stick the needles into the skin. Work while you're in the skin. Don't lift. Keep going. Don't be afraid. Keep going in. You'll sink the first time. Right here, I'm good. If you see a little bit of blood, you're fine. It's supposed to bleed, okay? Doesn't mean you're going too deep and blah, blah, blah bullshit, dude. You know, you're gonna bleed a little bit no matter what, okay? So, you've sunk a little bit, okay? Let's go back in there, apply some more A and D to that area. Enough to where it's not totally saturated, but it's okay. Go ahead and work. Use the corners, get in here, switch the angle up. Forty-five, ladies and gentlemen. Little small circles that overlap. Minimize taking your needles out of the skin. That's how you're damaging. Get in there. Go you can go backwards on, on this. On a liner you can't. On this, it's called feathering. You can go backwards and just hit it, okay? Use the edge of a couple of those needles, make a line, all right? Rinse it off, go ahead, little dab will do ya. You're not gonna be able to see much on my arm because my arm's been worked so many times in the same spots. But I think you can see that and how that was just done. Okay, apply a little bit more A and D so that it, the uh, blood and pus goes away. And I'm gonna go ahead and work on this band. Same thing. Okay. You don't necessarily just go in there and do that. See and notice the the noise of my sh the sound of my machine. When I'm in the skin, the the sound of the rattles going away. Am I correct? That's because you're in there. Okay, you're doing it right. You have a good setup machine. when you get older, blah, blah. Yeah. Okay? So, practice that for a little bit and there's not much more we can do. I'll go ahead and go over my arm. Um, I'll show you some more. Some tricks and stuff like that. Okay, now watch, watch my angles. 
okay? Into the skin, watch my grip. I'm sorry if you can't see it correctly because of the shadows and whatnot, but uh, you know, I'm trying my best here with, with what I have to show you guys what's up, okay? So I'm gonna fill this little area around the star in, okay? So before and after, watch, watch and pay attention here. Needle's going in. Listen to the sound of the machine going away. Means I'm in there. Circles, okay? Keep that pressure. Keep that uh, angle. Keep those circles. And you can go back and forth, cross hatch, come back out, and we'll show you the gradients that I'm building. Dig in, pull out. Dig in, pull out. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and rinse that off. Okay. Feel that. I don't know if you can tell. It's hard to see on the video. Okay. But it's sinking in. is that my make sure everything's tight on your machine I just noticed that mine isn't tight and that's not cool different parts of the area are different or different parts of the body just take your time Okay, where in the hell is it? Stick around with everything. Just think. Apply a little bit more A and B. Petroleum, whatever. Go back in there. Fill some spots. So, you can just go in there. Adjust if you have to. Shit's gonna bleed a little bit, okay? Especially when you're doing filling work like that. So, anyways, with that, um, that's a couple of little tips for you. 45 degree angle, keep it as that. Make sure your machine's running. Make sure that you hear that sound when you're in the skin. Make sure you hear that bogging down, like this. When you're in the skin, out of the skin, out of the skin sounds like that. When you're in the skin, it sounds like this. Okay, basically with those tips, um, not much to say. Um, colors the same way. With most colors, you just want to get in there one time. If you go over it a couple more times, you're going to be hurting. Okay, 
mess around with it, dick around with it, and start doing what you want to do. I will set up a liner, and we'll go for that. And right here, I got a 15 mag set up, and it's 3.30 in the morning, but uh, check that out. I wish it would autofocus, but uh, it's a 15 mag, and it's stacked perfectly like this. Beautiful needle, but it's too big. Um, well, you've got to push at least a 12 wrap, a 12 layer uh, machine with this. Because even, you know, this is a 10 and it's bogging down. To you, you know, if you don't have the knowledge or proper knowledge, you'll think, oh yeah, it's running pretty, pretty good. But, you know, I can make it work. It's pushing it though. Um, you need a 12 wrap for that needle. I just wanted to show you guys, but it will sink. Um, an eight wrap, a lot of people use that, and the max on that is five needles. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I'll go ahead and do something on here. Let me get a star. Let me do the star real quick. Star? Sink some on here real quick. Don't go over your skin too much, guys. You'll slice the hell out of it. You know what I mean? Period. You know, and that that bad boy's even running too 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 many bolts because you'll bleed. You'll bleed a little bit, especially with a 15 mag, but it drops it in. Stars are all jacked up. You don't want to know how many times people have been over this arm. Shitty people. Good people, Iraqi people, me people, I people, even my baby. Say what? Why'd you tattoo me? You're four years old. Why did you tattoo me? Yeah. Why'd you tattoo daddy? Because I want you. You wanted to. You're going to be the best tattooer in the world? Yeah, best. When I'm back. You're gonna be the best one in the whole entire world. Yeah. Okay, come here. Come say hi to everybody since they hear you in the background a lot. Okay. Come on, come over here and be careful. He always stays up with me. It's real late, three thirty in the morning. Till he goes to school, he can do that. Come yeah. here. And I raise good kids. Military, so that people say, "Well, you're a little rough." I'm not. I don't beat them. You know, I don't. I don't. I spank them if they do something real wrong. Come say hi. Say hi, Bubba. Hi. Right, right here. Say hi, B. Hi. What's your name? Uh, Tasio. Huh? Tasio. Tasio. Yeah. You have babies coming? Twin sister brother? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Come on, go play. Uh, -uh. See, and then he comes over here and he starts touching stuff. Yeah. Here. Let me give you the dice. I'll give you that dice and go play. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Go play. So that was my son, Tassilo. He's actually, he's a quarter black, a quarter Sicilian, a quarter white. No, and half white, because she's half white and half black. I'm half Sicilian and Hungarian, so he's quarter, no, he wouldn't be a quarter if I was half. I'm half Hungarian and Sicilian, and a little bit of English, so I don't know, we're mutts. The Sicilian takes over though. Ah, oh, what's up now? What is those? Italia. And what is those? Uh, give me those. Anyhow, that's his small uh, tutorial. He was trying to get into the uh, the grommets and stuff, and those will be everywhere. He's a good boy though. I'll show you my daughter too. Um, she's good. She loves to tattoo. Um, or I'm sorry, not yet, but she takes the machine and she'll draw with it on the paper. That you know, I'll, I hook up a machine I don't use and it's real heavy and she just draws with it she's getting used to it she's seven years old
Anyways, for this session, guys, I'm going to go ahead and post it. Sorry, uh, I know you guys have been waiting for a video. Um, this next round, tell me what you want to see, okay? Yeah, I'm not a good boy. You're not a good boy? No. Why? Because I got daddy's equipment. Well, I just added daddy's equipment. <laughs> you guys don't want to see what's over here in this section. It is packed. Packed with stuff. Well, here. Because uh, this computer's... This computer is now a desktop because my son dumped, you're talking a $2,000 laptop, Apple, MacBook, Pro, and he dumps shampoo inside of the keyboard when I'm at work one day. Come back, it's fried. I toss it away in the closet, come back, and pray to God, maybe it might work. Turned it on, everything works except for the keyboard. Nothing on the keyboard. I mean nothing so externally I've got a MacBook Pro and I've got a keyboard hooked up to it in a mouse what? it's it works though what? until next time guys I'll be posting some more stuff about that contest hit it up I need some ideas for some logos if not I already have a couple but I'm trying to throw out something fun cage and I'm out hit me up bye